Hi guys, it's G, welcome back to my channel. So, you're probably wondering, why on earth am I sat here? I'm always sat, obviously. Mm -hmm. And why I have my iMac just chilling in the background with a weird screen? Well, today, if you didn't know, my documentary has just recently been on, like again, and just, just a quick disclaimer, I have not seen the documentary since the first time it went live to the public so the first time I watched it was when everybody else watched it. Jan 2018 was the when my documentary officially went live and I am not the kind of gal who would want to watch that again just because it was one of the hardest things I've ever done like literally it was so hard and also there's a lot of things that again I still don't really like to this day there's things now looking back at and I'm like oh my god wow like what was I saying it yeah I could explain a lot of it um but yeah I just thought since the documentary was out last week and I had a few messages saying I've just seen you on the tv and you know what I was like I've got the link to it because after I did the documentary obviously it is my documentary at the end of the day I actually got given a link so I can keep that forever and watch it whenever I want so you know because I love myself I watch it all the time I thought it would be such a laugh to react to it since I've only seen it like once I actually watched a little bit of it the other day um, when you guys were messaging me going oh my god you're on the tv you were commenting on my picture saying i've just seen you so yeah i thought why not make myself cringe even more like if you see the difference between this and then my documentary i'm like a whole nother person my makeup my eyebrows absolutely everything my voice like i feel like i sound a bit different now like back then i was <laughs> let's react Let's cry together and let's cringe together because I like doing that for the fun of the internet. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys know what to do. I've said it like bajillion, million, billion times. But if you do like this kind of video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to head over to my Instagram where I'm pretty, you know, active on there. Oh my god, why do I keep choking? Let's jump straight in. Time. If I seem like I'm shouting, I probably am. Here it is, and yeah, not gonna lie. I'm clapping the pants. <laughs> Full screen, let's do this like we're at a cinema, alright? Alright. 30 inches tall and turning 18. Whoop, 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 whoop. Happy birthday to you. Hey, hey. Oh my god, my chef. My hair's dead short. My hair's like a boss. No, ew. <laughs> oh my god, I've got really short hair and a blonde streak. <laughs> Through my fringe. I don't know why, but I had this midlife crisis. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just cut my hair. And honestly, it was the worst mistake I ever did because I looked really young. Now, I do cut my hair now. Obviously, it's ridiculously long that I'm going to get it cut again. Look at that. My hair is to my bum. So, you know, it's not, it's pretty long at the minute, but the shortest I will ever get it cut is like, you know, to the boob, um, but I won't get it shorter than that. I just don't suit it. So when this documentary is being filmed, one, obviously I was 18, two, um, I had really short hair at the time, and three, I had like random belly arch, but it was definitely not belly arch. It was like a, a random blonde caramel highlight. Bizarre, it was cute, but honestly, uh, the look I had going on in this documentary was a lot. I look so young for 18 as well. I'm just two foot look at the outfit! Uh. Your average teenager. She's Britain's <laughs> tiniest teen. Oh my god! I hate that. I'm a member. 
remember he told me to turn mine in my room and as, as you can see there I am and I'm so glad he did this because you can actually see one how much I've changed to my fabulous outfit not my room was so pink and rose goldy and girly it's so funny to see how much I've changed like look at me look at me I'm not even the same person that's mad but being the size of an average two-year-old isn't her biggest hurdle in life. <laughs> Every day is a struggle. It is really hard being different, being in a wheelchair and being small. Oh my God, so I remember doing this interview. So if you actually watch this, if you do watch this after the video, um, if you actually see this part of the video, it's grey with me talking, you actually see um, that one, I had to wear the same makeup for the whole week because I had like the biggest part of the interview. I was the one who was talking through all of it. Like I had a, no lie, it was a whole Bible full of, not script, but things I had to say and speak about and answer questions. And this was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. I had to do breaks. One, let's just take a moment for the eyebrows. The eyebrows are so drawn on. Oh my God, to even think about me doing my eyebrows like that now makes me physically sick. Like, I can't even draw on my eyebrows now. I use brow gel and that is as far I, as I will take it. Um, I had to wear the same makeup. My makeup kind of looks nice. Like, you know what? I didn't do a bad job with my makeup, but I did wear a lot of makeup back then. Like, so much foundation. Um, I wore quite nice highlight, highlights, actually. I'm pretty glowing, I'm not gonna lie. This was when I was 19, but when you see me with short hair, I was actually 18. And I had like ombre hair as well. And her condition causes her constant pain. I take morphine, diclofenac, paracetamol, and lidocaine patch. Yes, boy. Oh, I can't remember those things when you were a child. No. Do you not think I sound really different? Like, I sound really high pitched. Like, I know I sound high pitched anyway, like, we all know that. I've seen the comments. But I feel like now I don't sound as high pitched. Maybe it's just me. In this documentary, I sound like a chipmunk, and yeah, I'm not. I'm not for that. I love that. Only the '90s kids will ever know how much I used to love my Jesus bracelets. Like the '90s kids will know Jesus bracelets were the thing back then. She's determined to find a way to control her pain. I have been looking into other like forms of pain relief because I don't want to be on morphine forever. She also wants to know the answer to a question that has bothered her all her life. Why is she so small? Now, right, I'm just gonna put in here, and I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if this is actually gonna be taken out, but this documentary actually started to do with like my pain, my difficulties and stuff like that. It was never really to find what I had just because this part of me is not really spoken about a lot due to some things I'm not allowed to talk about, etc. But I wasn't really there, this whole documentary wasn't about me finding a diagnosis and the honest truth was, and like I'll give you the real tea, I did not care about a diagnosis, I never do want one, I know deep down what happened and things, but I never wanted a di diagnosis, I actually went to America to look at pain um, options and maybe speak to some doctors to find out I don't know if there's any more like pain relief or to look more into um, my joints and stuff like that because that's more what I'm interested in never about the diagnosis so I know they mention it a lot in the documentary but um, it actually was never about that it did for some reason turn into that but it never was and I still got really nice comments today saying like so glad you found a diagnosis or whatever and it's like Honestly, I never did, I never wanted to because deep down I know what happened and I believe, obviously the thing that happened is that because there's so much evidence to support it, I can't go into it and I really wish I could. But yeah, I've never got diagnosed and I never do want to be diagnosed because you girl knows why. But this was mainly for my um, my pain and the most interesting part of it was I met like Colton and stuff like that. It was insane. Oh! Why is, not gonna lie, why is the dummy bigger than my head? Like, the dummy is bigger than my head. That's a massive dummy. But at least I 
coordinated. Like, I had a white dummy, white nappy, white baby mat. Love that. How cute. I look so cute on this. So this part was when I had my, oh my god, um, my third operation. I don't even know what operation this was. This was the operation that I was talking about in my other video that I had a week after my 18th birthday. So, yeah, my 18th wasn't great. Um, but it was the week after I had this operation and obviously I was filming at this time. So they did record little bits, but they never recorded after I had my operation just because I was really unwell and didn't want the cameras in my face. To obviously ease that pain, to take away that horrible hip pain which she'd lived with for years. <laughs> she was desperate <laughs> for those operations. That's and so I think that shows how much pain she was in. The operation on George's hip has taken over four hours. The operation this was really one of my first operations. operations I was really horrible to wake up knowing that I can't even sit up. George's surgeon was, was hoping really to try and alleviate the pain as much as he, as he could. Unfortunately, my pain is still really, really bad. I have no energy in the... Oh, look at me nose! My little nose is going bad. Oh, my makeup was actually quite good. I feel like rubbish. So I'm going to take my morphine for this morning. <laughs> and, yeah. Oh, look at me. Georgia just wants to be like every other 18-year-old. And today, it's her first day at beauty college. I am really nervous to start makeup school because it's something new. And being around people who will be my age and that obviously brings back memories of when I was in high school. I love it. Hair on fleek, Georgia. Oh. Good luck. I'm telling you all about it later. Alright. My hair was so nice. So my mum did all my hair, and at the time I still had quite short hair, but my mum curled my hair, and obviously this was the first day of doing my makeup course, which was at MVM Academy, and again I bloody loved them. They're so fab. They made me feel so comfortable. But back then, like that was a big thing because I finished college, and I finished college quite early just because of the crap I went through so I finished a lot earlier um, I think I just like left it and didn't tell you one so again I'll do a story time on that but I left college um, and then we obviously did the documentary so it took it's a good part of my life after I finished college to go straight into a documentary it gave me something to focus on to do obviously I was in a really weird state I didn't know what I was doing with my life I didn't know how to get a job or anything um, and that's I think that's when I started to pick up YouTube and stuff but um, with this, I ended up going to a makeup course where I live, and it was insane. You know, it was just weird. Like, I've never done makeup in front of every, anyone. I've never been into a course. Like, going into somewhere that I no, don't know anyone was so bizarre. But it was, it was honestly the best thing I did. Back then, I used to wear a lot of heavy makeup. Um, and now, I'm just like, you know, less is more kind of thing. But yeah, I loved makeup. My makeup course was insane. She wasn't getting invited to parties or, you know, even for lunch. If they saw Georgia at the end on the table, people would move away and go and sit somewhere else and then turn, literally, like, turn the back and laugh at it. Is. And it's just heartbreaking because you're like, you're sending her off every day to school to obviously learn. And to enjoy and have fun because that's and probably the best thing, it. isn't it? Yeah, like, as many of my dad clearly stated, like, school... And college, I would say the worst time for me ever was college. It wasn't um, really the people in college because I kind of got over that by high school. It was the environment I was in. It was the like the, the head teacher, the teachers, and doing obviously all of that and having hell. And then going to this was like whoa! It was like going from there to there. It was a big jump for me, and ha to have the confidence to go on my own and be with people that I never knew is still kind of a big thing. I've gotten a lot more confidence now because of YouTube. Like I go to events now, I go to Big Beauty Out. Like that's a big thing. Um, I'm not bothered meeting people anymore. But like two years ago, I was, it was a completely different situation. Like I would have never done that off my own back. And being in a wheelchair and being small especially when I'm with a lot of people my own age because I feel like, are they judging me? Yeah. 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 Oh God. <laughs> oh God, I didn't even know I said that. <laughs> that is terrible.
terrible. No, it's not. It just my nerves. My first like word would have been oh god because I was so nervous. Okay. Can I say it for Thank you? you. Yeah. Imagine meeting yes. girls because I haven't met them no. yet. These girls honestly were the nicest girls I could have ever had in my course. So this is Josie on you know, like nervous to me, and she was my model for the first day, but she was also my model for one of my exams because I loved her that much. Yeah. Thank you. And today we're doing festival makeup. Perfect. <laughs> still absolutely adore doing festival makeup. I think it's still one of my favourite things to do. Um, because it's more like glitter and you can kind of do whatever, like blusher here. I love festival makeup more than anything. And I do find it difficult to like reach for products and spraying products because my wrists are really <laughs> <good as well. laughs> That's so funny. I didn't even realise that was caught on camera. I basically leaked while I live. I'm in quite a lot of pain and it gets me down a lot. <laughs> I'm such an ugly crier. Like, wow. I remember they were saying like, we're not gonna get you to cry, we're not, I'm gonna have to sit in your room all day and film you to even show that you're in pain. And obviously, like I've said in my past video, I do not show my pain to anyone. So for the fact that like, to capture it was so hard, it was just impossible. So what they did was they gave me um, like a little camera, almost like a vlogging camera, and I filmed it on that. And when I had a really bad day, my mum was like, listen, just film it. And it was possibly one of the best things I did because obviously they loved it and it showed really what I went through instead of having loads of makeup on and going, I'm in pain. Because it was never believable because I used to wear a lot of makeup um, to hide it, which is the whole point. Life is pain. It's not like just me being small the main part of my life is pain so i can't cope without like painkillers that is literally gonna be my life pain georgia rankin is britain's tiniest teen oh. i hate that just gonna say it i hate the fact like I know it's not a bad thing, but I hate the fact they put a label on me, and that's the whole reason why I don't want a, like I don't want a diagnosis because I do not need a label on me. I don't know someone likes the same gender, do they really have to be called gay? Like that's the same thing. Like do I have to have a label saying I've got this or I am, you know, smallest? Obviously I'm not smallest teen now because I'm not a teen, but. And back then they used to call me Britain's smallest teen like or tiniest teen. I still hate it to this day just because I hate the fact that it's like a label to me. I just want to be known as G, not she's Britain's smallest teen or whatever. I just didn't like it and that is like the honest truth. I want to be like dead, you know, truthful in this video and be like, no, I didn't like that. That was one thing I wasn't a huge fan of and that's the reason also why I don't want a diagnosis because whether I've got a diagnosis or not, I'm no different of a person. Even though a lot of people don't get it, I just, I'm not bothered. I just want to be just horrendous. Do you do worry how much pain that she does go through? And, and seeing, um, probably get scared the upset now, really, do that. <laughs> My dad gets upset. I just don't like to see her in pain. And it's, it's just heartbreaking. We worry about the long-term side effects. We were hopeful that Georgia would be able to wean off morphine, which it isn't the case. But we worry because what is going on internally? Is is it doing any damage? When we filmed this clip, so obviously um, I had both of them in the water with me, like we had a camera with them, with me, sorry. And then um, we were going, like I was going into the water. And on this day, we found out that the ring that I was using to swim in popped. So as you can see, I really do struggle. Like the ring is like making me feel like I'm sinking. I love being in water so <laughs> You can tell it's proper sinking, it's like flat <laughs> So I ended up having my nails done for like the going to Denver and then here we ended up doing a clip of me packing and the clip of me packing in the room, I love it, it's so funny. I think it's warm, but <laughs> it's just nice to have. Yeah. Take, no, take the black oh. ones in, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Let the toes see the sun. For the fit. I love that. So, I 
I don't wear, I don't like wearing sandals. I'm not a sandal gal, like, look at me, I'm just not very girly. So even back then I was like, no, I don't wanna wear sandals. I bought my Converse, cause back then I used to wear like Converse all the time. And I think that's the only things that I wore in Denver. But um, I did have like sandals and mum was like, take them cause it'd be hot. And that's what my mum said. Let the toes see the soul. That is like the best part, honestly. This is the bit where we go to Denver. This was an experience. The plane journey, which again, I don't think this was, don't think this was mentioned, but the plane journey um, to Denver was probably the worst journey I've ever done. I just ended up being really ill on the flight and to film like clips in the airport was just not happening because I was so ill. Jo has a 10 hour flight, but when she it, gets- It was meant to be a 10 hour flight and it ended up being 12 hours, so no wonder I felt ill on that flight. Um, I'm feeling really tired. Um, I'm feeling really, really nervous, like terrified, because it's such a big convention. Britain's tiniest team, Georgia Rankin, and her family are in Denver, Colorado. My main focus of this Denver trip was to find pain and like, you know, doctors to speak to doctors. It was never to be, you know, to the convention. Because I've not got a diagnosis, I even get kind of looked at in a weird way because they're like, hmm, why have you not got a diagnosis? Like, it's weird to be in a convention and everyone looks at you as different. So even at conventions like that, I feel so out of place. <gasps> there it is, yes! So this is the Green Man Cannabis Factory. And oh my God, I remember turning up here with my dad like, wow, this is something that I will never forget. Going to a cannabis factory is not something, you know, you would do. Um, it's crazy. It's insane. I went here like, oh my god. Sorry, in Denver to meet 17-year-old Coulter. <laughs> and we made pot brownies. <laughs> the brownies worked and the family then found someone who can provide them with cannabis oil. That's not, I'm not going to lie. This is the reason why I also want to go to Amsterdam because I'd love to try the... Um, cannabis brownies because apparently they're like really good and I don't know they help so how cool would that be to go I love Amsterdam anyway I've always wanted to go but the fact that cannabis have it uh, Jesus <laughs> the fact that Amsterdam also have you know cannabis cafes with like cannabis brownies stuff like that it's such a cool world I'm saying I'm not promoting this on my channel at all I'm just saying if someone has um you know men really bad mental health or um, you know, chronic pain, it is, there's evidence that it works, but obviously it's not legal over here in the UK, love that. That's 15 milligrams of CBD and THC, oh. take about four of these a day. Oh my god, that's why it works. So the thing that we've got in the UK at the minute is CBD, and it's got the THC out of it, which is what can give you the high. But, because we've got, oh, like, I still got so many messages to this day going, the CBD, you should try that, it will help you. But the thing is, what Colton is on, he's got, like, this tiniest bit of THC, which is the strong stuff, which does help, but it's a natural, it's a plant at the end of the day. That's the stuff that can help you with the pain. And because we have it in the UK, but we only have the CBD, it basically means CBD does nothing for me because I need the THC to help me. Does that make any sense? I feel like that was very complicated. But basically, CBD doesn't work for me. I need the stuff that's been taken out of it to help me, which is the stronger stuff. So here I was explaining that I've been on morphine for a good few years. Like, I've been on it for years. And if you read up about morphine, it is the worst for your body. Like, long term, it can give you really, really bad effects, like, on your liver. Your whole, like, organs are just, like... Yeah, this is not great so I was explaining what I was on and then um, Colton's mum was actually saying how bad morphine is for your long term health it's not the best I think it makes me so drowsy um, I look really ill with it don't I yeah, and I have it. Out yeah completely spaced yeah. out yeah. it's kind of crazy that there's so many side effects to all of these medications morphine yeah. is horrible on your liver it's just not helping yeah. the condition that you have it's actually making other conditions. Of course, George has decided to stop. Oh my god! Oh my god. So, this is my channel. So, they actually 
added my channel onto the documentary and oh my god I had only 832 followers look at everything my concealer and then move on to my little lash line <laughs> I am so so happy for her because that is her passion in life and you know you oh um, I just used to say to Sai you know you know what what will she end up doing in life? Will she end up just being stuck behind a desk? I live life on the edge and I'm going to put this green eyeshadow on my lash line because it just blends it all together. I would love to grow my YouTube channel and have a really good business, maybe have my own makeup line. That would be a dream of mine. And that is the finished makeup look. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Oh my god. Oh my god, what did I have? We had a drink at the festival and it was bloody amazing. I'm sure it was like cloudy lemonade vodka or something i don't know what it was but whatever that drink was i want it in my life again I, i've never had it since um, but this drink here was insane so guys now i'm becoming an adult i would like a lot more independent oh i had henna and not feel like I <laughs> oh my god so when we were filming we were attracting like loads of people and me and my friend was like obviously sat on the grass and we attracted like this big group of lads and they were just dead nice and that's the thing with festivals people don't care they just come and sit and talk to you which i bloody loved and it was just a dead nice environment and then we were right i think we were right next to the big main stage where bastille was playing but the whole like atmosphere at a festival is so good and it was really hot as well so you can imagine we were just one hot sweaty mess bastille what on that stage bastille Oh my god, so that's like the Reading stage and I think Post Malone played there last year and then this year Post Malone's going again with Billie Eilish and I want to go. I want to go and see Billie Eilish so bad. Do you need some more got something? <laughs> Honestly, not going to lie, when I drink any alcoholic beverage, it definitely helps with my pain, which is so bad, but that's why I said it, because like uh, Prosecco and stuff, because it's quite strong, it genuinely makes me dead happy. <laughs> so me on like, you know, on a night out is great, because I'm like the happiest. I'm alcohol lamp, oh, love it. Helps everything. <laughs> I love this. Ah. This cake that he bought me was amazing. Like it was all handmade by the chefs. And then, because we were always like rushing and stuff, we ended up leaving this massive cake in the hotel fridge, which you can imagine was so like, what? It was so annoying, but it was insane, the cake, but I never even got to eat it because we left it in the fridge. And back home in Warrington, there's even more good news. I have just been told that I have passed my makeup course and I am now officially a level two qualified makeup artist. Uh, I can't, I just can't, I have no words. Yes. I love that. That was so enjoyable. Oh my god, I got really dumb bum. <laughs> like, I have no words. Again, it's so weird to look back and watch it all over again. It's so crazy to relive it. Obviously, it was like nearly two years of raw footage. It was such a hard process. My interview took um, like a whole week instead of four hours. But again, it was such an amazing experience. I wouldn't like change it for the world and it has helped me a lot on YouTube. Thank God I had this as a platform to back me up because now this is my job. Um, if you do want to watch the full documentary, the link is in the description. Just click the link. Um, it is my private link, so don't worry about it. You can click it. You'll be able to watch it for free on Vimeo. So thanks, Vimeo. <laughs> don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to love you and leave you. I really do hope you enjoyed watching me cringe. I just want to quickly mention that I'm going to Big Beauty Day out. Last year when I went Big Beauty Day out, I was under 100k. And now I'm going with, you know, 
over 500,000 of you guys, you know, who have subscribed. Insane. If you are coming to Big Beauty Day Out or you want to buy tickets, the link is in the in the, 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 the link is in the description really excited for this year i'm going to london and manchester this year yeah i'm gonna love you and leave you for the final time and i will see you in my next video Bye.